Hey, yo, what's good, what's good, what's good? Welcome to Reflections of a DJ, the road podcast presented by DJ City and Beat Source. I'm one of your hosts, DJ Crooked. We got DJ Never here. Yo, yo, what up? We got Jamie the Great. Yep. And we got a special guest. We got Harlem's <laughs> finest, DJ Melstar. What's good? Hello, man. Yeah, you, you had a busy, busy summer, man, right? Take oh, you taking the sunglasses yeah, 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 yeah. though? I, I, I want to keep them on. I want to connect with the guys, you know? Yeah, yeah. But I always, like, I, you know, they got their glasses on like they're too... Good to speak. Now you over here like music video shoot ready you over yeah. here like, with, hey, the, listen, with the man, matching. I'll, everything matching. I'll, I'll tell you. We got to show the kicks because it's matching with everything. Oh, you want to see the kicks? Yeah, I want to yeah. see the kicks. <laughs> Bro, oh, I swear to God, I said this shit earlier. Har- you can always count on, on a Harlem motherfucker, uptown motherfucker, to be the matchiest person in the room. Damn, man. Look, he's matching. Yeah, look at that. The green with the, with the green. Yeah. It's coordinating. Yeah. Coordinate. Gotta coordinate. <laughs> you gotta coordinate. Jesus Christ. <laughs> coordinate. <laughs> Got the infrared orange on. Hey, it's it's popping. Hey, I'm, I'm listen. I'm trying. To, I came here. Yeah. I wanted to look cool and be cool, like yeah. y'all. You ready for the music video shoot? <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. I, 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 I in the glass. I had the glasses ready yeah, too, yeah. so I, I was all ready. I is that a, is that a Harlem thing? It is, it is a Harlem. Right? Thing. Yeah, hell yeah. But, yeah. yeah listen, the match. I think like it's, it's a have, match with the kicks and everything. I feel like it's a New York thing. Man. It is a the New most, York. Yeah, thing. it's definitely. Nah. I, I, I yeah, New York in a project. You have to match. You have to look a certain. way. I'm definitely gonna. I'm a, I'm a shoot at Harlem with this one, um, you know. The you gotta have it was it was ACGs, Air Force One, mm-hmm. and Tim's. Mm-hmm. That's the three. But you, you wait, Jamie's trying to say that Harlem is the the shit that where like everything's matching. Yeah, and, you guys and, are the best dress and you got borrowed in hip hop. Yeah, like for sure. We just wasn't. I feel like we just wasn't into wearing a lot of shiny and different types of things. It was just like, you know. You what are you the, crazy? What are you talking about? The the buttery white tee or one of these and match the sneakers in the hat. You got that was important. Now nah, Harlem is like the flashiest that was, right? Hell was, yeah. That was important. But you have dip set. You have the ASAP people. ASAP and the leather people. jackets. You have fucking you have uh <laughs> Cam. You said Ma- Maze Cam. Maze. Maze. Yeah. Dap, dap it down. Dip set. All right, let's Spot. let's let's yeah, settle right. this. The the problem is that you have like three uptown motherfuckers right here. You have Factory. the Bronx uptown in Manhattan here. Mm-hmm. I just think you have no one repping for Brooklyn and everybody Queens right had now. Their own style. I didn't want to dress like Nori and, and Biggie. I would <laughs> say this, man. Who, why? Let's have this combo. Which borough do you think is the flyest? Has always been the flyest. Harlem. Since the 80s. Harlem. 70s, 80s, 90s. Harlem. 80s and 90s. Harlem. Yeah. I might have to Never wants to say the Bronx. No, no. I want to say <laughs> I want to say Uptown. Yeah. I would uptown. definitely give it to Harlem. Definitely Harlem. Yeah. I would say Brooklyn. Bronx, Brooklyn, Going exactly. Yeah. Okay, where's, I don't I was, know. See, I think no. Queens motherfuckers are kind of that Queens was in the eighties. Fresh too. Queens is it, fresh. Yeah. I mean, you have yeah. what LL, that was Run like, DMC, that was the eighties. Yeah, yeah. So you guys, I mean, Queens probably got it for the eighties. Everybody had they they thing in each barrel. So yeah. everybody's style was when you saw it, you knew. Like it's just like when in Brooklyn, I think back like in the nineties, like they would wear forty belows. With the the jeans stuck in, right? Versus in Harlem, we wouldn't stuff the jeans. I mean, the um, boots. Mm-hmm. So it was just stuff like that. Carhartts, mm-hmm. Carhartts, yeah. Uh, the army jackets, all that was definitely Brooklyn. Hard body. Queens was like the Avarex jackets and shit like that. It's like then, uniforms and shit. Yeah, Queens had like the Helly Hansons. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then yeah. like Harlem was just like all the butter soft flavors, colors. Like you could see somebody with a lime. Green leather. It's so also, it's also all that Dapper Dan influence. Yeah, up yeah. yeah. town. Mm-hmm. So who who in the nineties you guys said would have the best fits? Where's Rock Kim from? That's my other question. I think he was Long Island, right? He was Long Island. Okay, yeah. I'm not, I was gonna say Rock Kim from the Flyers. As, as per Biz as well, but Biz was born in Harlem. But you know, again, it was just when you came to Harlem, it was just like a strip. Of stores that yeah. you just went in, same as the this, Bronx, this, same as Brooklyn. This Two pockets from Harlem, right? So, but it just Long Island has slept on a lot. Like hell, I was watching yeah. the Biz Marquee documentary, yeah. uh-huh. and I was like, "Damn!" Like, yeah. like no one ever talks about Long Island. Yeah. Like, really? Yeah. Like they don't really shout Long Island out. Yeah. But like all the best motherfuckers from yeah. the eighties and nineties was from oh. Long Island. Yeah. Same as Mount Vernon. Look at Mount Vernon. Yeah, mm-hmm. look at Mount Vernon them. too. Like so, you, like what happened in the two thousands? I don't know. Where, like that's what my question is. What happened in the late nineties to two thousands where Mount Vernon and Long Island just kind of like stopped producing? They had I, the run, bro. Yeah, I, 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 I think 
And There's got to be a story behind that. I personally <laughs> believe that term. We, you know, we were talking about this term. The term is old school, and I feel like once you know it, it somebody said it got old. Mm, Someone outdated. said it, and that's what happened. And it's like, think of all of the producers that we all know, that we all love, that are still here, that can still make music, but then they'll say. And nah, uh, this guy is old. He can't make the same music that we are making today. Well, what was the first time you heard the term old school? Because the first time I heard it was in the early 90s, and we were yeah. referring to like even Slick Rick. Right. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That, so, was, like, that wasn't that far along. It wasn't that far. <laughs> it was like five years or something. But like, I remember like, it was like when we Good. spoke about old school in the early 90s, it was like Slick Rick, audio Audio so two, audio and uh, like KRS all, yeah, and everything shit. in the eighties was old school, right? And that, I, that's the first time I heard it, but I could be wrong. Well, you know you what? Know what back in in hip hop during the eighties, yeah, during the late eighties, you had like Public Enemy was popping, right. LL Cool J, Run DMC, and then we used to um, consider artists like Kumo D old school, right? And that was like fucking. That wasn't. That was like four years before. But that's what eighty eight. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's, it's always been like it's that. It's crazy, yeah. It's always been like that. Shit. And I think about it now, I'm like, damn. Ooh. Is that where that term started, though? Old school. It was like, we could say like Flash, like um, Sugar Hill Gang was old school. Old right? school, yeah. But that's yeah. when that started, right? The right. Different but then, you know what? Dougie Fresh even um, talked about it in Vaza to the Top. Old school, new school. Need old to school, learn. School, school, need to oh, learn. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. maybe 88, that term 88? old school probably started to kick in. Yeah, because then you had like, because everyone that came out in the 90s was considered new school. You had like yeah, leaders right. of the new school. Everyone mm-hmm. was saying like, "Yo, the new sound, the yeah, hip hop, uh-huh. and all of yeah. this shit." It mm-hmm. definitely elevates. We all obviously can attest to the fact that music changes per whatever that level is. You know, you know what? Like, I, was, I say every four years, yeah, music it's always changes. a new sound, always a new sound. But again, it, does it mean that it's old? Mm-hmm. Because you think it's insulting? I think it's very insulting. Really? And and the reason why I can I say that is because they don't say old school rock and roll, and that's why Kiss and Aerosmith they Rolling, call it classic. They can still Stones. go on stage and perform and have fifty, sixty thousand people watching them, versus someone to say, "Oh, we're gonna go see that. Oh, that's old school. How? Who? Like who really?" coined it to make it i I disagree man i don't know i disagree because this year showed us more than any other year for sure that old school is alive and thriving but but that's also because it's the 50th anniversary of hip hop i mean but yeah they're they're pushing that on the 51st but that's but that's what's gonna happen next year then well well, here's the thing that was a good marketing campaign Mm -hmm. for all of these old school rappers and everybody to come together and like get a bag and like you know go out will it and celebrate the culture will it be a 51st or 75 but it you know what it's funny it planted the seed right mm-hmm. that yeah. people want to see these artists and, of course you know mm-hmm. and the music is still relevant to a large demographic because yeah. versus some of these new artists that had to cancel their tours yeah right, right? Like, i mean i said well was the ice tea that was talking shit on yeah. Twitter, yeah. Mm-hmm. where he was saying like yo like all these new artists are canceling tours and like yo like all the legacy artists and old school that's artists that's are fucking bodying it right yeah, now. Yeah, you know? facts. Wait, who canceled? It was Little Baby. L- little Baby. And Little Dirt. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. They had to cancel But then you have fucking 50 Cent, like a 60 yeah. city yeah. tour. And but that yeah. shit was 50's crazy. Old school. 50's considered old school. To now. me, he's not yeah. old school. Which is crazy. He's a legacy act. Chit, chit, chit. He's old chit. school. He's old he's school. He's not old school. Legacy is old school, man. He's old school. <laughs> Yo, I remember 50 Cent dropping. That's, that's 20, years, 20 years ago. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. And then 50 came out in the late mid 90s. He's old school, man. Also, nah. Okay, so it's yo, so nah. it's my nah. yo, Jamie, Jamie getting old. Nah. Man, so you don't realize it. Bro, <laughs> <laughs> well, let me hear. Let me, so, my back all, hurts now. All, all them jokes you so fuck with me about, I'm gonna fuck with you about now. <laughs> yeah, so, so getting it. Then here's here's the here's the real question. And so, if that's the case. Where does Busta Rhyme stand? He's old, he's old school. school, man. I legacy act. What? Legacy you don't think act. He's old school. Busta's old school, man. Yo, yo, wow. I think, but I, th- I think the proper term. Wait, for why? Why, why do you think? But you act like Busta has been dropping like hit records for the past <laughs> five years. I know, man. You don't consider Busta old school? <laughs> no. Are you? What sick? do you consider him? He's been around thirty yo, years. 
He's a he's over thirty relevant years. Relevant leader, I would think, right? No, but like in a category, he's technically old I school. No, because he was in the nineties. Yo, fam, like Chingy, all like you know, Jay Quan. These That's guys old are school, old school. Man. Like, That's our one hit wonder. <laughs> How are they old school? Damn. Like fucking Bust ain't old school. Bust is old. So school. okay, okay. Let me ask you, what is considered old school? Tw- Ten years? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Like even five years? What is it? If, to, if, to, if, to me. Old school to me will always be the eighties hip hop. Yes. And that's, then, and that's then where you to me nineties will be backpack rap. Okay. To me, nineties hip hop is nineties. Yeah, that's old school also, man. Yeah, it, but that's what I'm saying is someone can call it old school. Like, cause you know, young people and motherfuckers yeah. just take they just call anything they think is old, old school. But I technically consider it nineties. So Pac. 90s hip hop. Biggie. Yeah. 90s. I, to me, that's Mob. like kind of like that whole 90s era. Golden era. I would actually call it new school rap. And then I would call like the Jiggy era, like, you know, Dude. the 2000s and whatever. And like late 90s. Yo, the Jiggy era always confused me because yeah. but you, can, never, you can lump everything I'm up just and saying, call it old school. I feel school. like everything over 20 years old is old school. I mean, anything I mean technically, five. anything past five years is old school. So like mustard is old school. Yeah, that was my question. <laughs> that was gonna be my question. Is mustard old school? Yeah. Mustard's I mean, yo, old school, to like man. yo, you no. talk to a twenty one year old, like he gonna be like, man, that's that old shit. Remember that old shit, Bobby Schmurder? <laughs> You know what's crazy? So over the <laughs> Bobby Smurder is like audio to top billing for them. You know? Nah, That's bro. Crazy. You know what's crazy? Over the weekend, I had to I had to stand at the door and check IDs because uh, it was like wait what? Things. What? <laughs> Hold on, let, I, I'll get to the point. While you were DJing, it, well, I got there and they couldn't switch me over because they had two hundred people at the door and they, they were lacking the security. So like, yo, can you just check ID for like to like. The security gets here in five minutes. I say, yeah. So I start checking. I would IDs. look at them like, "Are you crazy?" <laughs> so hold on. I love doing shit, you know. So they gave me the the first girl gives me the ID and it said August 15, twenty two. I mean two thousand two. And I was like, "Wait, is that twenty one?" You years? had to do your math. I had to do my math, bro. I'm like, dude, she wasn't even born when the towers fell or nothing. Exactly. This crazy shit happened that I've experienced. I'm like, wow. That's when I felt old. That's when I was like, yep. Man, you old, man. Compared yeah. to like, yo, 20-year-olds looking at you? Yeah. Like, oh, man, you, know me? <laughs> you, you could be my daddy. <laughs> <laughs> my daddy. Oh, yeah. Oh. So, yeah, it, it's crazy yeah. to think now. <laughs> Even the, the 50 Cent shit I was telling them, I'm like, man, I really want to go see 50 Cent get, get Rich Die Trying Tour. I'm like, I can't believe it's been 20 fucking years. Wait, I, both man. of you guys were at the 50th uh, anniversary for hip hop at yeah, Yankee yeah, Stadium yeah. in the Bronx. I, yeah. Mm-hmm. How was that shit? That was dope. Were you, you, were you backstage or were you I, in the crowd? Yo, I went. This is what I did. I went back. I had a friend. He gave me a, a lamina pass. Laminate, like, yeah. And um, I went. I didn't say what's up to nobody because I wanted to literally go in the crowd to see it. Absolutely insane. Oh, so you stayed in the crowd? I stayed in the crowd. As a, so as, crazy. as a fan. Absolute fan. Whew. This is crazy. Wait, can you, can you tell it you was, were there, right? I was there, yeah. Were you there from jump? Like, when did the I, concert start? I got there, the show started at 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock. I got there, 6.30. You did? Well, you were there early. I was there. Mel, how Man, He helped set up the there? chairs. I went to beat the yeah, yeah, I was there. <laughs> you went up to set up the chairs. Why? Because it's hip hop? Like, they ain't got <laughs> oh, shit together, man. right? <laughs> no, nah, because he's from the Bronx. So they're like, oh, you've been here since the jump. <laughs> help us put the chairs on. <laughs> Yo, never. Can you check IDs? So, did you guys feel young or old at this concert? Wait, wait. <laughs> I want to know what were the acts per hour like. Kind of. Oh, that's crazy. Because you were there since yo. What boom, time did you boom, get there, Mel? When I got there, it was like e- EPMD had just started. <laughs> then it was like Dougie Fresh, Slick Rick, like all the old OGs started. Yeah, yeah. Who was performing? And then like, and then all the old. The and then every, like, everyone from the eighties they left and they went to bed. And then nine o'clock, <laughs> ten o'clock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was like everybody. <laughs> Guys, they, that's fucked up. Are the nah, old school they, guys? That, that they, day. Not for nothing. <laughs> wow. When, when Snoop came These out. Snoop, Snoop, Snoop Wait, had, how late is this shit going to? Snoop and the butt out. It's fucking like, 9 30. Yeah, damn Snoop it. bought the whole. Snoop bought like mad people out. He bought family. back EPMD out. Yeah. Oh, shit. What did he do with EPMD? Well, did some people just favor. Did they, um, I shot the sheriff. Yeah. Oh, shit. They go back with NWA, yeah, NWA and, the East, they, they, and the East and West was actually they, at they were one yeah, at that time. At that time, yeah. So mm. it was it would look strange to see Snoop bring out E. Did, like, wait, how does that? But yeah, man, like 
rapping and rhyming was the shit at that time and and everybody was their favorite favorites mm-hmm. you know what mm-hmm. i'm saying especially at that time and but krs1 fat joe but i krs1 which is <sighs> fucking well fat joe and krs are like yeah they yeah, like they're joe like go cousin back, crack and that's like, like the bronx right there yeah. so you know that, that building was shaking when he yo. when krs did south bronx yeah oh man yo <laughs> i remember like getting into source magazine and seeing like KRS and Fat Joe hanging out like doing graft together. They used to do Yo, graffiti, yeah. And yeah. the and the legend is still you cannot go on before like you can't like if you go on before or after Chris, it's ugly. Mm-hmm. Bro, when I say the the two times I've been in a situation where the building was damn near erupting had to been when Jay Z did, I would like to say the Black album mm-hmm. at the Garden. Yeah, and this shit at at the stadium. Like I've never with like, KRS. Yo, oh my god! Like, you think KRS was was the was the highlight of the whole show? Nev? No, no, he wasn't the highlight. He, he was the highlight. Just, <laughs> but it was just like when he yo, came on. It just yo, like, never wow, shitting bro, on this everything shit you say right now. Crazy, no? <laughs> I mean, no, 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 it wasn't a highlight. It was definitely a moment when KRS One came. Yeah, because like I said, he's from the Bronx. They could stand in the Bronx, so everybody, the majority of the people that was in the yeah in there was from the Bronx, so that shit was just that like shit was, it was crazy. So, crazy so who, wait, so who Absolutely. followed KRS? Damn. And get, wait, it was Fat Joe though, right? It was Fat Joe show. That was Fat Joe oh, set, yeah. yeah. And then who came after Fat Joe? Was it Ice Cube? It was Lil Wayne. It was, Wayne. It was Lil Wayne. Yeah. How was his show? It was. That's kind I, of a I hard follow. <laughs> I know, man. It wasn't bad. It yeah. wasn't. It was good. It was good. But it was. It was. It was right y'all, there. Y'all are fucked it's, up. It's I crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, I just After, think it I was can, just so much. School, I can read between the lines. Y'all yeah, saying yeah, that shit was yeah, wild. Was that weird. shit was it mid, was, yo. It was so much. It was just, it was so different, much. man. It was just, it shifted. No, no, yeah. started did this line thing with his hand. He said, it was, like, it was right there. Oh my right God. There. It was just it was okay. Dope. Right there. It was dope. You know what? It, it, was, getting, right. it was getting late for them. I'm going to keep it. I'm gonna keep it real with you. After, they back started hurting. And they after, were like, oh. after Fat <laughs> Joe set, it was just like that's when like it, the West Coast took over. Like out of yeah. uh. non New Yorkers took over. So it was just like Lil Wayne, mm-hmm. Ice Cube, and then Snoop Dogg. Did the crowd start changing, getting younger and shit? Or not? <laughs> you could no, you could tell the difference. You could tell the crowd that the people. Yeah, you, yeah. Could, you could tell with who they came to see. Yeah, like you could see the younger kids was like with Lil Wayne. Of course, right. set up. But then you seen the old heads. They when Kellis One came out, it was going crazy. <laughs> yeah. When Kerouac came out, all the old heads were like, oh. Yeah, I mean, you saw like the whole stadium groan to get up. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 This guy's like, so <laughs> bad. So, so That's fucked up, man. That's all all so the canes foul, just, <laughs> you heard the canes hit the floor for All the canes was in there. I feel like, <laughs> 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 There was people in line with walkers trying to get, get into the show. I go front. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Was that, know, are you serious? That true. They're serious, yeah. Oh, wow. They're wow. waving them in the sky. Yeah, that was real, type though, of man. It was like, like mad old heads. Yeah. Oh. That old heads with the Run DMC. It was, Adidas, it was really like chain. one of them experiences was the fact that you had damn near all of hip hop in one building at one time. Mm-hmm. So everybody. Got, you know, like what was the like a fresh fest type of thing? Yeah, like uh-huh. whatever when they did it in the eighties, and like Houdini and Run. So it was like all of these people were in the state. It was crazy. It was crazy. Yeah. Shouts out to Clark Kent too, because oh word. <sighs> wait, wait, wait! I want to hear this. Who had the best DJ set? Yeah, you had kind you of know what? shout out to Active also because he yes, held it down Active held it from down. beginning yes, to end. He was like Active yes, was hosting the whole night. He yeah. was DJing like between yes, sets. Did. Oh yeah. wow! So he, he was like kind of he was the the in between entertainer. Yeah, Clark Kent. Yep. <laughs> Clark Kent. But then you had down. like Clark Kent came out did his thing. <laughs> what did Clark Kent do? He played like I would like to say we call it a, like a rest in peace set, and he just played like all of the past. People that pat yeah, it was, it was hard. Oh, wow, it was dope. Yeah. Everyone was super crying. dope. He went through every like he went rapper. Through, yeah, wow. super dope. Super That's dope. Sweet. Also, Kid Capri killed it. And of well. course, the K I D again. And then after Kid said, Kid put like um, Derek Cheetah. Yes, he, yo, when Derek, wait, yo, he brought, listen, De- he wait. brought the captain out. That's the why cap- I, yeah. we was second. Yeah, we was waiting to set that up. So when Kid, yo, so we like kids rocking. He's doing his thing, and then he just like. Turned around and and like we looking like who the f- he was like yeah I'm gonna bring someone now I'm gonna bring guess. somebody out right quick da, 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 da. he walks to the back 
Derek Jeter came out, B. Oh, man. Is that a big deal? I don't even know. Yo, fam. <laughs> yeah, bro. Yankee <laughs> Stadium? Hold on. Wait, wait. Whoa. While I'm wearing this hat. You got that hat <laughs> on your head <laughs> right now. Take that hat off, man. What did Jeter do for the Yankee? You remember that? A New York t shirt on the fucking I'm fucking around. I'm fucking around. Everyone relax. How was that so, uh, Battle Cat set? Was it dope? Oh, nah. Battle Cat gets busy. And you know, it's We crazy. want him on the podcast. Yeah, yeah you yeah. got to get back. Battle Cat got war stories. Like, he has a yeah, lot, yeah. lot, a lot, a lot of stories, man. Like, just sitting and talking with him is just like, you're going to get some knowledge. You're going to get some street shit. You're going to get the, yo, and when this happened, oh, word. And yeah, and, yeah, it's it's crazy. Like, he... That would be awesome. Yo, Battle Cat, you need to come through, fam. Yeah. Text him for us. be like, hey, big head. Co-sign that shit. I'm not doing shit for you. (laughs) What? (laughs) We just gave you the best dress award. (laughs) Yo, yo, before we stop talking about the um, fifty and there was a hip-hop in Yankee Stadium, Two performances that was fucking crazy. Yeah, I want to hear. Lauren Hill. Yes. Not what I Lauren Hill. She sounded fucking amazing. She was on time. Nas. Nas brought her. She sounded How was the Nas performance? Nas is Nas. Look at Nas. Nas, Nas. <laughs> we see Nas. We Nas see Nas in concert Nas. before. Same Nas is for little Wayne, huh? Nas is Nas. Is that, That's just like asking pack, about. Whatever. That means nothing. Nas is Nas. That Nas. means asking about like ever being rock him. Like you know what you're going to you know get gonna happen. with yeah. those guys right there. So yeah, shouts yeah. out to Nas. And then also Run DMC closed the show. Yeah. Oh really? <laughs> it was their last <laughs> performance together. They woke him out yeah. before they yeah. were gone. They had to wake up everyone. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's disrespectful, Jamie. <laughs> Yo, this Wait, room is- New York, New York. This guy here is talking shit about New York December. Nah, bro, I'm just giving you shit. It's funny because usually shows are done at 11. Yeah. Never said it was done to like one or two o'clock. That shit went to two. I two a.m. Man. I I was getting tired. Time, you man. stayed the whole time. <laughs> yeah, you- I left like. Uh, maybe five minutes before Red DMC set was done, but yeah, I just wanted to beat the crowd. But yeah. damn, that's that crazy. Long, I didn't so. see the whole thing. I definitely went in and looked for what I wanted. You didn't to go see backstage at all and talk to nobody. 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 Yeah. nobody? True fan. Oh wow! Literally, I really just wanted. I mean, I, and I see a lot of those guys. Yeah. So you know, to see them perform is even better. It's like oh shit, and it's a stadium, so you're. It's a different atmosphere. It's a different look. It's a different feel, and the people. It's, and it was like a, the crowd was so fucking nice and peaceful. Yeah. It was like no fights, motherfuckers. Like no. some dude bumped into me. Pardon he me was B. just like, no, 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 I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Pardon I'm me, like, dude, pardon me, B. Good, he man. thought you were Russell Simmons. That's why. Like, that. <laughs> <laughs> <Some, Damn. laughs> some chick was selling Hennessy in a fucking um, in a tube, five dollars a shot in a tube, <laughs> leading from where? And, and it's like when you um, wait online, yeah. to get inside. Some lady was like in the street selling five shot, five dollars shots of Hennessy. Damn. Oh yeah, <laughs> but the oh, tube yeah. was leading. It was from like where? it was like a tube. No, like a like a little tube. Oh, should say you like a tube. Yeah, and, a, a and, a nut, oh, like and a and a test tube and, and the, the test nut, tube yeah. and oh. the nutcrackers. Like, come on, fam. That's what we do. How many yeah. did you buy? I didn't buy. I, yeah, you, you did. Know what I, mean? <laughs> I wouldn't know. No, honestly, he's a three for ten. I'd be scared to buy that shit because you don't know what the fuck could be in. Nah, that it's shit. happening, B. It's <laughs> happening. <laughs> he's a three for ten. That shit could have been fentanyl or whatever. Fentanyl in your Hennessy? They putting fentanyl in Hennessy now? My young man. <laughs> Times are rough. Times, Times are rough, rough man. Man. Oh, man. They're trying to get you for They're trying to get, hell yeah. <laughs> Yo, so like, summer has been crazy. Like, Black yeah, Party has been oh, crazy. Man, 50th yeah. anniversaries. I saw, you know, I, I know you had your own event at the DJ Expo. Yes, I did. I did. Mel Star and Friends. Mel Ooh. Star and Friends. Yeah, man. Um, Sugar had, Hill Gang. Yo, you had Sugar Hill Gang. At Sugar Hill Gang. Um, I didn't Scorpio, know you had that kind of budget. You had Melly that budget. Mel, I'm, listen, so, uh, Grandmaster D, DJ Scribbles. Jazzy J, Grand Wizard Theodore, wow. Scorpio. The, the Furious Three. The, yeah, Melly Mel. He didn't, he didn't yeah. have more fives. <laughs> uh, yo, man. Oh, man. <laughs> no, I know. Rest in Peace Cowboy. Yeah. One of them passed away. Oh, Another yeah, one's in jail. Sure. So it's like three of Yeah, MC, MC Globe. <laughs> you've, been um, waiting to, you've been waiting to say that for a minute. You see that, right? <laughs> That shit is fucked so, up. Yeah, it was, it was crazy, man. Like, it was, it was a, a hell... Of a party, man. Like real talk. Shouts out to my man Sean Hazen too, because me and him and Jim we connected up and put it together. And man, that's crazy. It was wild. Like it was, it did, was really wild. Did Melly Mel perform his diss track? Her, rah, rah, rah. That was all I needed. Yeah, and and I was good. So now we, you know, staying on the message. Yeah, of course, and and you know, Furious Five stuff. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it was dope, man. He didn't play his diss track. He definitely <laughs> did not play the Yo, diss track. Did you hear that diss track? I did yeah. not. I didn't. I did not hear it. You didn't hear it. I didn't hear it. What, who was he dissing again? Eminem. Eminem. No yeah. fucking way. Yeah, I think the backstory is that in an interview, Mel said that like uh, Eminem's whiteness equated to him being more successful. Yeah. Than being a capable rapper. You know the crazy shit. Yeah. Thinking about somebody saying that, and you think about. Looking at the eight mile, right, and and where he this guy came from mm-hmm. is is that really his true story, M? From you don't, why mile? you don't believe it? Oh, now no, you question his shit. Like, <laughs> no, no, no. Meaning, meaning, like if he really, if that really it's happened, a true story. like that, like supposedly, yeah. yeah. <sighs> you might as well put him on a bro list. Yeah, he's the here's the quote that Mel said. He's white, so now if Eminem was another N word like all the rest of us, would he be the top five on that list? Uh, when an N word could rhyme just as good as him, you know. Yeah. I'm not the biggest Eminem fan, but th- a lot of people are not rapping with Eminem. I I agree. No with that. matter what color, I agree with that. And then he said, "The point is this: if I was white, I'd be greater than Elvis." You know, Melly Mel said this. Yeah, he said oh, motherfuckers wow. would be like Melly Mel is greater now. <laughs> and I think yeah, Eminem dissed him on a track. Basically, yeah. when he hopped on a song, Realist. So, like, when... That's what it was, yeah. So, yeah. if the if the diss record was that bad, um, nobody... See, that's the thing. And I'm like, well, did anybody say, well, hey, Mel, don't do that track? Well, the Melly Mel diss record was so bad, even Melly Mel apologized for putting, <laughs> putting it out. No <laughs> way. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry for bringing this garbage out. They, they're saying this is the first battle Mel lost <laughs> wow. in history. Wow. But I, <laughs> oh you God. know what I love, though? I love the the veracity. <laughs> is that a word? The veracity? <laughs> yeah. The audacity? <laughs> no, the veracity. The audacity? No, the veracity. What is the veracity? Are you making this word up? I think it sounds like I made it. It sounded like, <laughs> it sounded like You want to make it like angry and <laughs> shit. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to go check that out. Yeah, I think I just made it up. Yeah, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> the veracity of no, you know what? I'm just trying to say I I appreciate the passion that Mel has to go always. into the studio. Yeah, he's always on hundred. And just to be yeah. like, you ain't taking like, there's no fucking way I'm gonna let you get away talking shit on me on a record, yeah. and then going back and then recording what he did. But in 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 retrospect, he didn't even need to do that. He shit. didn't. Uh, yeah. yeah. Damn. The first line of like, uh, like you, <laughs> you look bad like a roach crawled out of your book bag. bag. <laughs> That's I never gonna forget that line. The, the engineer should have stopped it right there. I'm like, <laughs> oh, yo, no. I was yo, recording. Yo, my bad. I'm like recording this man. <laughs> Even oh, that frame, like shit. yo, like a roach crawling out of someone's book bag. That shit hasn't happened in like 30 years. I feel like <laughs> like, like like roaches coming out of book bags. That shit hasn't happened in a while. You know he had that in uh, in the cut for the last 30 man. Damn, nah. man. But yo, I I love the energy though. I love wow. I love I love him. But someone uh, just said, like get your shit off. But like let's not release it. You know what I'm saying? Just <laughs> rest. Fine let's in play it in the car. Let's go. play it in the whip. Wow. wow. You know? Even Eminem probably had to laugh at that shit. He's like, I mean, Eminem. I mean, I don't know, man. I, and he didn't respond, did he? Huh? Um, no, he no like I said, Melly Mel apologized like a few weeks, a few <laughs> days like, later. He's like, yo, I'm sorry if I put that out. I would have apologized too. <laughs> Damn. I mean, M is nasty. I mean, he's a sure. great rapper. Sure. Like, yes. not, yeah. like, he, like everyone says, like, yo, he's overrated. You, we don't play any of his songs in the club. Like, yo, you yeah. can say whatever the fuck you want. He's still nasty as fuck. Like, yeah. no, he's yeah. a great rapper. Yeah, one thousand. We still playing his shit. Hold on. I don't know if you're playing his shit, but yeah, he's still dope. I mean, Damn. what are you playing of Eminem in the club? I mean, there's certain. Like, oh, yo, here we go. Yo, here we go. I'm gonna tell you right now. <laughs> here we go. You want to? You want to shake, shake that ass? Sir, no, no, no. <laughs> Family, you crazy. If you were in the right room and you play Lose Yourself, everyone's losing that's their That's another one, mind. yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That shit is like dreams and nightmares for white people. Okay, that's one. That's one <laughs> you know right there. Yeah. That shit is He's like- He's got a point there. Oh, what's, yeah. that? what's that? No, what's the shit with Akon? Akon. Smack. Smack that ass. Smack that. Smack that. Nah. Yeah, you, you don't need to play like that, that though. But if you yeah. gonna play Eminem, that's what I'm saying. There's no Eminem. That's an Eminem song that, that you would hear somewhere in the club. Smack that. Smack that. I mean, <laughs> Smack that. The Nate Dog is is I would I would maybe that's, run the that's Nate the Dog. That's the best before, part of the song. But I haven't played that record in I don't know. I think I, I don't years? think I've ever played play it once in a while. Wow. Yo, when which, I get that crowd to play it for, which, you must you must. <laughs> <laughs> wait, what? What'd you say? Is a great question. 
What are you playing today? What do you mean? Oh, I'm playing music. so much. What are you playing? I'm playing a lot of new music. I just wanted to get an idea of what, you know, everybody's, because it's, it's a lot of opinions in here, right? Yeah. So we got four opinions. And I've always wanted to see, like, you know, what is your take? Especially because we are all in rooms, mm-hmm. right? We all do clubs and we're all everywhere and doing shit. So I was just like, hey, what what are you playing now? Like, what's your take on the clubs right now as far as ski you the scene yeah, right. ski you not ski, ski you. you ski you ski you it's a remix that's a- <laughs> fuck you man and not ski you <laughs> Jesus Christ with this guy that's yeah, like, just- like when you get home and your dad is like like singing on to like the ski new you. songs slipping the you. I like that new song and shit like we was we what was just hanging out um yeah we actually went to see you we was hanging out uh what was that last week yeah, on the record. Yeah. yeah. This past Saturday. Yeah, yeah. We uh, in Spider Tech. Yeah, every yeah, I, yeah. Yo, I love that guy. Yeah, he's an amazing yo. DJ. <laughs> amazing DJ. Those are my two guys. Spider yeah. is my guy. Like I I've it, it was like it was like we were at on the record yeah. and I was like Spider Tech in one room and then you had Never in Never one was room. In the other room. And I was like bouncing back and forth, pause. Yeah, and same. I was like Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. The hand motions bouncing back and forth. Oh. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I was going to both rooms, like back and forth, pause, and I was just like, "This is great!" Like two I'm hearing, vibes. Yeah, I'm hearing like two vibes. Two amazing DJs play yep. like like amazing sets. It yeah. was great. Like never like yeah. playing a bunch of shit. I was just like, "Damn, man!" Like yeah. I gotta get. I gotta reorganize my crates because, like, I forgot about a lot of these records. Yeah, yeah. Are you, are, are, are those old school records you're talking about? Old, old school, <laughs> old school. <laughs> hey, cram Pappy. Shit, man, I told you that shit, man. Nah, Wait, nah, are nah. you are you playing new shit? Uh, um, like, like, I are do. you playing the my, I Spies? I do. Um, so for me, I always looked at it like I would really try to do parties. Why I say in general. I'm turning the radio off. Mm. That's and I and I say that in the party sometimes. Like I'm turning the radio off. My thing with that is that I don't have a problem with playing any of the new stuff, and I do. I play a lot of it. Um, sometimes I just feel like it's oversaturated right now. Like you know, and then they don't last long. So these are the same records that we play today, and they're gone in like three weeks. Mm. Then it's the next record. Three weeks. Then there's another record, three weeks. So I'm just like, for me, nothing against the new. You know, like I said, they're dope. I just feel like there's more substance in the stuff that we play, at our, obviously, that are older records. And there's also so many older records that a lot of people haven't been introduced to. You know, so mm-hmm. that's something that I really... You like, know, which older records do you feel like people... Yo, what was really that record? Off? I went, yo, one day, I don't know why I did it, but I played, um, I, actually, I did it at On A Record, and they thought it was a reggae record, and actually it was. I played Out Of My Head by Shuggy Otis in a reggae, par- in a reggae set. Mm-hmm. So when the record came, it was like, what the fuck is that? But then you because the- Actually, that record, it does sound like it could have been made recently. Right. So just it's shit he, like that. The way he was so recording, it, it was just like ahead yeah. of his time. But So when you- you slip in these records. Now it's like, is that a new record or what is that record? Right. You know what I mean? So that's always something that I, I really try to do in my parties. Like we all hear the same shit. You can go to the other one, you know, that club. Mm-hmm. And that's where y'all know where all of the drill and all of the, you know, that genre of music is like heavy at. So I feel like when y'all come around people like myself, I'm looking to do something different all the time, every time. Mm-hmm. So whether it's new or whether it's old. Yeah. So. Well, to me, like when you DJ, I feel like a Mel Star performance, right. it like transcends like whatever's relevant on radio For or sure. clubs. For sure. Because we're just kind of watching you perform. No doubt. Yeah. No and doubt. it's like we're like it, it just becomes even if you're doing a nightclub, I feel like your presence on the mic right. and your technical ability and your catalog of music so, allows you. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, it allows no, I, you. I definitely appreciate that. No, no, it allows you to, like, you know, just kind of let people, like, hey, listen to me. Right. 
And I like, know what we're doing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like we're going on my journey for a second. That's the like one thing I was going to say. I was going to add to that, Kirk. I don't. When you see a Mel Star, Spider Tech, and a couple of the other other guys, um, it's not just a DJ set. It's a performance. It's, it is a, like a journey of music. Right. When you see these guys, you're like, okay, well, what is he going to do tonight? Because yeah. I, I never heard a Mel Star set to be the same from the last one I heard. Right. Mm. It's always a different fucking yeah. thing. Yeah. You know, back to what you're talking about with new music, though, what I have noticed in maybe the past year and a half or so, mm-hmm. I feel like new music is taking longer to register yeah. to people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of what was happening in the 90s and 2000s, yeah. where a record, a new record took six, four to six months to really hit yeah, people. absolutely right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whereas, like, absolutely. remember, like, before the pandemic, remember, we were kind of like... In this era where when a song dropped, people wanted to hear it that yeah. weekend. Yeah. yeah. Like nice. that 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 like right away. That stopped, right? That's gone. It's, it's gone. It's like even when a new album drops, we would be like scrambling to download the album yeah. and like be like, all right, what songs do motherfuckers want to hear? Yeah. But now it's like I'm not even downloading the shit because I'm just like, all right, let me see what let's happens. See what happens. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In a couple yeah. weeks. Absolutely. Cause I already know like I'm trying these records out for a few weeks and it's not registering. And then I, I just like, I'm like, I, I'm not fucking running it no more. Right. And then two, three months later, it becomes a hit. Yeah. yeah. As, a, as a DJ, like my uh, premise was always let's look or listen to records, right? So my thing was always, okay, you know, you get your emails, your list of bunch of records are in there. Like my, the way that I do it is... If it's not good enough, it won't even go on my desktop. Like, it won't even reach it. Like, you I won't, won't even, even download, download it. it. Mm. So that was always how I kept, you know, making sure that what I wanted, I had. So if something's a, if there's a big song mm-hmm. and it's big, it's like mm-hmm. everyone's playing in the clubs, but mm-hmm. you don't like it, you're not downloading it. No. Mm. So you wouldn't it. feel like you would have to eventually download it? No. So you, just you think about, like, certain records that... You know, like they would say, you have to play. Yeah. I won't. That's not me ever. Mm. So I'm telling you, it's literally, I'm looking. My impact is something else, I guess. And it's not the new record. It's never that. You know, again, it's nothing against the new artists, right? So I don't want it to be like, oh, we're just shooting at artists. But the DJ, I always say, is the teacher of the classroom. The teacher of the classroom looks at all of the students and you have to give a lesson to the students that are in your party. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that right there separates your new school, your old school, your this school, your that school. So that kind of was that theory of uh, as what they call open format, y'all call it? Mm-hmm. Like, what do you mean me? You don't I mean, I'm anything. just... <laughs> what they call it? What, what, call. what it's called what they is, call a, it? is open format, which was... <clears throat> You know, even that term, like, you know, we used to be able to go in a room and have to play six and seven hours at at a time yeah, yeah. years ago. And with records, you know what I mean? So you had to situate everything. The same with what we have now with Serato. So it's the same. I look at it as, as it being the same thing. Mm-hmm. You're teaching the class and Sorry. I'm not accessible to playing whatever everybody wants mm-hmm. because... You're not paying for that. You're paying for the experience to see the person that you're going to see, right? Right, right. So it's it should never be, you know, crooked's the jukebox. Why are you walking up to me <laughs> like this with your phone if you're coming there to get crooked's experience? Well, that, that's why I say I feel like when when I see you DJ, it's mm-hmm. like you're taking people on your journey. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like and that, and that a lot of that goes from looking at the people, looking at the crowd. Like, okay, if there's twenty year olds, and there's thirty year olds, and then there's fifty year olds, and sometimes sixty year old are in that one party. You got to find that one record that meets everybody. Right, right. Mm-hmm. And when you get that, then you're on. Mm-hmm. You know, and sometimes that that first or second record will make or break you. Right. <laughs> You know, mm-hmm. I got a question like for all of you guys, actually, you mentioned like the six, seven hour sets. Mm-hmm. What is the ideal amount of time that you would like to DJ? I'm only saying this because I've been approached probably recently in the past two years mm-hmm. for like one hour sets. Yeah. Oh, great. And, topic, and, and, uh, and for me, like I'm used to doing yeah. four to five hours yeah. at least. 
So yeah. when someone asks me to do a one hour set, I just start panicking yeah, because yo. I don't know what to play you know, in an hour. You, and this is the worst yeah. shit. It's basically your four hours like compressed yeah. into a one hour yeah. showcase. And, and just to clarify, this is mostly when you're talking about like doing a party and you're kind of in a lineup, right, Cricket? Yeah. So like if, if I'm in a lineup, mm-hmm. I like I'd almost rather, and I don't mean close like headline. I'd right. rather like close. Be the last. I'd rather one. be last. Because you, you have an idea of what to play because you heard all your other DJs. Well, like I, well, there's a couple of things. I'd rather be no like I'd rather everyone go off mm-hmm. and then I'll be like I can pick up the pieces and yeah, like right. and, and hit it. That's where you become that that DJ, right? So mainly when you walk in, like the night is usually when you walk in, you're playing just C or B D records at that time. Warming right? yeah. So you're starting, you're warming the room up, and then I guess what, eleven thirty, twelve o'clock? You pick it up. 12 o'clock is, is the prime. Mm-hmm. And then now you got all the shit you want to play from 12 to 1.30, 2 o'clock. And then there's the... But but see, that time frame to me is like, that makes sense. Yeah, but... I'm talking about day parties. Right. Yeah. So, like, day parties make no fuck... Like, the time frames be yeah. weird, bro. Like Oh, yeah, it's yeah. definitely... You know what weird. I'm saying? If, like, it, if it's a bunch of people, like, if they're cool, the only thing I can say is you can talk to them and say... Yo, why don't you play a reggae set? Why don't you do a house set? Why don't you do see? A I like that direction. That's a better you, direction. Yo, I like, like when people give me direction. Right. But if they're just like, yo, you, this is your time slot. Yeah. Do, do your you, thing. Do you? Oh, I fucking <laughs> that one hour set to me is yeah. like I'm just like I'm really trying to. I'm actually learning how to but, do that. Shit. But you know what the question he was asking? How many hours? Yeah, you prefer DJ. Yeah, what's the I would honestly prefer the DJ for four hours. Four hours. Yeah, mm. me too. Because you know why? It's like if get the control. I was out, oh. I DJ out of town, whatever headline. Yeah. It took me like a good hour and a half to like just get in it, get into it. Yeah. And by the time and felt, that was that, you were done, and the shit was almost over. All right, just set over. Thank you. Finally, something to get into it. It's <laughs> yeah. just like fuck, man. I yeah. don't, I don't like that because I will. I I come from LA and everything. Yeah, and they're kind of like on the forty-five minute to an hour set each DJ. But now that I'm here and I've hung out with you guys and I kind of been taken under you guys' wing, I can't do nothing less than three hours. Two and a half maybe, but I would love to have the four hour range just like never. Because you got you control the night. You kinda control what what's coming, what hasn't come. And with somebody else, you kinda you need to juggle a little bit too much. Yeah. You know what also I, I think too, like with the hour sets, mm-hmm. I think sometimes like everyone's approaching their hour as like, I need to make a viral moment. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So like, everyone's just like, I feel this like anxiety. I, gotta, I must play. I feel like everyone's anxiety of like, I need like, need this, is a, this is a, crazy yeah, like this is a high profile, like oh, I'm playing a hundred thousand records. <laughs> you know, like right I need, now. I need these viral I, moments. I need, I need a sing along. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You need a, you need a, yeah, you need a I, maker. And I, and there's a part of me that's like, you know what? Like, I don't want to fucking do what y'all are doing. Like, yeah. I don't want to feel, I don't want to display that energy. But that's the cricket experience. No. Yeah. <laughs> to just do, that's like, yeah. say, do you. If you're not going to do that, then We're going to name this episode the cricket experience. No, nah, don't, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I, you know, like, I can feel like the DJ's anxiety and like that, that yeah. just like, yo, I got to go on and get these viral moments for the fucking yeah, party. I, I think that's cool. But when the viral moment happens, naturally and organically that has way better impact but that's what i'm saying is that some of these viral moments like when you're at the party they don't fucking they're not fluid yeah they're They're like forced yeah but like that's why when i dj i'm not just gonna give you like a routine 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 yeah Mm -hmm. because on video it seems like it flows yeah Yeah. but in actuality it's like completely forced Mm -hmm. because i'll be at these parties and i'm like Okay, like you just like switched it on, and that's cool. Yeah. But then it just drops down, and it may drop down for a while, and then viral moment drop down. Whereas like an actual set that's hitting will just be fluid, Mm -hmm. right? And it won't necessarily have like viral moments, but the vibe and the energy will stay up there, and it'll be consistent. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh Yeah. So like I'm feeling like torn between I right, do I just hit him with viral moment viral moment viral moment or let it flow yeah. and you only have an hour mm-hmm. so it's just kind of like how do I pick and choose where to go how do I not step on the toes of the DJ who's after me 
you know like i i tend to think about that shit i i wouldn't i don't know i, I think just like we're talking about the the 50th hip-hop uh lineup that they had ice cube lil wayne i don't think none of these dudes were like oh i'm gonna hold back because i don't want to you know overshine ice cube or snoop dogg or whatever i mean i think you kind of need to go no but i think you you're not looking at it that in these lineups for these parties you're kind of the artist and you're not the dj you have to kind of go and do a set where you perform a set it's different because these artists have their records yo like you know what i'm saying but you have your routine i have an infinite amount of records and but you have your style you know what i mean like but like these day parties everyone picks like kind of the same records to p- play for but that, the, then for that's those viral moments you know what i'm saying like but then that's what makes you different when you don't pick well those everyone's records. gonna like i literally was at a day party and i heard keisha cole love that's all i hear right oh, yeah. shit. and i heard like the tevin same campbell. <laughs> tevin campbell can i tell you that can we t- i heard that Kevin every Rain. those are two big ones i heard that out. every fucking hour on top of like a wow. couple of like regional hits like everyone played that every hour i'm i'm, I'm sorry you know what i'm for saying doing that yeah <laughs> to these people I'm sorry y'all. you really I'm got sorry. into it I didn't want to say nothing I am sorry that was, you know what I'm starting to hear a lot of yeah. also <laughs> Anita Baker yeah I'm Candy sorry Candy Rain y'all. too Candy Rain has been a big one I'm, I mean, I'm all sorry those, all those typical joints yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah I hear that you yeah, know yeah, like, yeah. I'm, that's why I like I'm like let me stay away from that shit but you, then, you, y'all been, motherfuckers yeah. do that but yeah. think about the ones that wasn't doing it are now doing it yeah see that's the whole thing so now again that's just a point of just saying okay I'm going to go back in this bag again mm-hmm. and come up with something else. I'm sorry for the Tevin Campbell. I'm sorry for the Anita Baker. What was that? Keisha Cole. I'm definitely Candy sorry Rain. for the Keisha Cole. Um, <laughs> what up? The Carl Tom. I'm sorry. Yeah. The Joe to C's. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, there's like, you know, everyone's playing like... Uh, and I only did that shit was because they would really come in and whoever was playing before me would really like try to like burn it all the way out like burn every record and i'll be like okay when you're done you just let me know yeah yeah. and i'm gonna ask because i was definitely like yo i'm like no you know what you're rocking you just when you're done just let me know yeah yeah. and then some whatever whatever happens at that particular moment it's literally on that dime so it's like oh i know the record i'm gonna play right now Mm -hmm. and that that record usually erases everything that you didn't did the whole entire night. And that's the the point of your impact. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I would never, you shouldn't think about anyone when you're playing. You should think about what you're not going to play. You know, what you're going to play that they haven't played. That's still good and can still get the party moving. But see, like, I understand what you're saying. I'm just saying, like, I'm used to approaching the night from a four yeah. hour perspective absolutely yeah. so when you approach a night from a four to five hour perspective there's an arc right. yeah and we've always talked arc. about the arc right i think in the end i'm, I'm working on the hour thing right. and like grasping so exactly how i want to approach it i do have a tough time trying to cram a four hour set that i do usually every night right to a fucking hour and a half set it's hard it's really difficult yeah. that's a problem that i don't think is spoke, spoken enough yeah because a lot of like djs like never myself and mel star we're so used to doing the four to five hour set yeah and now it's like nah we you only have from 12 30 to two o'clock yeah. and just give us what you want which, what we need and what you what you know what we deserve and whatever but it's like, dude, I don't know how to cram my four hour arc set into that fucking hour, hour yeah. and a half. That shit is difficult. The minute you look up, it's two o'clock. It's done. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> like done. <laughs> the, the minute you look the, up, you, went to it like, you feel like you going and guys like, yo, we shutting down in 20 minutes. You're like, wait, what? bro, are, you oh, know how crazy shit, it is? It's when almost the, three o'clock. They come and tell you, yo, last call in 10 minutes. And you're like, what the <laughs> yo, fuck? Yeah. It's like, yo, music shut off in 15. I'm yo, like, what? I'm up here. Like, yeah. like, what the fuck? I hate that moment. I hate that feeling. It's, it's like, like you hate it, but you kind of love it too. It, oh, right. I mean, you're going home. You know, you're like, it's oh, okay. Crowded. Everybody's out. like, yeah. lights just pow, come on. And it's yeah, and like, it's so abrupt. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's also weird nowadays because like maybe, I don't know, like 10 years ago, mm-hmm. like the club would stay open. Yeah. Yeah. You know, right. but but nowadays they'll just like Hard they'll just close early because the, the the good people have already made their money already, and especially if you're that's a, so crazy, a, a great DJ, and that's yeah. the thing. So you gotta also look at that and applaud yourself too, because usually there's two options is happening. 
the party is nasty and nobody's here or this shit is popping and we made all of our money and then some. Mm -hmm. So the risk is, you know what? We made our money. Let's just shut it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 20 minutes later, it could be a fight, a, a whole bar fight. Yeah. You yeah. know, so they, you know, then you look at yourself and say, well, damn, they cut the lights on and this whole shit is packed. Well, people, you've done your job. Now that's that. Yo, could you just play one more record? <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just Can you money. play one more? You like packing up? One more? <laughs> Why we're done. Talk? We're done. It's one over. more. Just turn it back. Just one more. They can you turn off. it back on? Who, who can I talk to? Oh God! And that's and that's the satisfaction of doing your job. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, hey Mel, I gotta ask you a question. What's up? Like when we were when we were hanging out, you jumped on the mic uh, when Spider Tech was uh, DJing and uh -huh. shit. Big pause. He was doing uh yeah pause, and then you was doing like crowd work. Uh huh. And you was fucking around. You was having fun. I was. It was, it was a vibe. You I know was. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I, I was wondering like. Uh, like with my work and a lot of DJs that you hear, mm -hmm. I was like, I wanted to ask you this. Mm -hmm. um, what is like the number one thing that you hear from other DJs that they're doing wrong with their mic work? I am not the the sale for like being a mic guy. Mm -hmm. Like I've learned over my years of, but yeah. what I've learned yeah. is I don't really talk on the mic. I ad lib to the song. Mm. So while they're just and we got this at the bang, and then it's a record. Then they stop, and then we over here, bang, and then they yeah, go yeah. to the next record. To me, I always felt like the people who do that compensate for their DJ, so they're not as good of a DJ mm -hmm. when they talk or they over talk in their parties. So for me, like I said, I ad lib how I, you know, so it's like I'm talking with the record and the response comes from the people right. when I pull it down, but it's in a continuous motion. Mm -hmm. So that was something that I, like I've, you know, Boogie Black is great at that. And I used to do so many parties with him, DJ Knuckles in the city. He was great at that. So of course, Kick Capri, like these are the, the legends of the legends, Kick Capri, Brucey B, Star Childs, uh, Love Bug Starsky. So those are the guys that I've watched. Hollywood, I've watched them. Mm -hmm. And like I've seen that they would introduce themselves, but then when they started to like segue records, you know, like kid one of kids move at the time from a tape would be like, drum tap, here we go, boom. So, and it was a drum tap of a record. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So, and then Bruce would just, nah, nah, we getting ready to go uptown. And it's through the record while it's rolling. Right. And there's no talking on the song. So, by the time he comes down, the vocals is on. Yeah. What you're, talk what you're talking about is you're using the mic to fill in the gaps. You fill in the gaps with the right. mic. So, you know. It's kind of like the um, DJ radio. Radio. Yeah, like. When the, um, DJ plays the radio, song on the radio. And he talks during the beginning of the song, during the instrumental, introduces the song, whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then when the song kicks in, uh, he stops talking. But it's mm -hmm. different. When you're in the club, you're kind of talking, but you're talking on beat. Mm -hmm. Right. And then you're talking like in between the snares and right. the kick. Absolutely. So the, the, one of the problems that I hear with a lot of DJs on the mic, they're just talking on the mic. Just to talk. And then they're cutting out the song just yeah. any time. And I call mm -hmm. it compensating for DJing. Right. So. Whereas like what when you really work in the mic pause, like right? You know what I'm saying? That sounds yeah. crazy. Like, <laughs> yeah. When you're really working, like when you're really doing good mic work, you're filling in the gaps. Yeah. Yeah. So like if you're technically looking at it like kick, snare, kick, snare, yeah. you're actually talking between the yeah. kick and yeah. the snare. That's right. So like, and then right before one hits, mm -hmm. you know you take the beat out on the snare, you fill in the gap, let's do it, boom, and then right. it hits on the one. Absolutely. A lot of the motherfuckers on the mic are just talking and it's yeah. not rhythmic. And it's not in on time. It's not in beat, mm -hmm. and it's just like I've I've been seeing though a lot of like younger DJs. Yeah, which is a another thing. Like, yeah. that's what I've also noted. Just to add to that, like, so a record could be two hundred BPMs here, and a lot of people don't know how to get back down to one hundred. Like, right? Yeah. So they would just completely just boom. 
talk. Big shouts to all my birthday people. And but, if you celebrating birthday, and then it's this next record. But a lot of hip hop like, DJs been doing that. Does that like, all the time. But what happened? Like, and I'm and I'm only asking that because we came from the parties where the music wasn't was never to stop. Right. Mm-hmm. The music was supposed to never stop. So even if you was going or segueing into anything else, the music. So you don't like that. You don't like like hopping on the mic to like switch the BPMs. Oh fuck no! Nah, because it it sounds bad. You don't like that. Like it's no. What do you mean? Like I've heard you. I've heard you. To me, not not in the way. (laughs) No, no, not in the way that he's presenting. Right, it it disturbs the vibe. Yeah, when he's switching records and he's talking in between every record. But I've heard you successfully be in like 110 BPM and then like transition to like crank that. You You know what I'm saying Oh yeah I mean that's a little bit different That's that's what he's talking about No no I'm I'm talking about When he's saying He's talking on the mic And then He drops the record on the one He cuts that record He talks on the mic again And then he jumps into the next record Mm -hmm. That's what I don't like that's, I mean, I remember, a lot of DJs do that. Yeah, it's like I'm not mad at it. Where is the flow though? Like, that, that's I think, my here's problem. The thing. Because even you've heard me DJ and you've given me great feedback, and you're like, I like what you did here, but this shit dropped too much, and the the beat took a minute to kind of pick up on the one. And I was like, Yo, you're right. But so, see, like, if something's gonna take too much time to build up, that's when you get on the mic, and that's crazy because that's what I noticed from me playing here. That is the absolute like because because you before, think it's gonna and it yeah. doesn't and it's like what's well, like if you're playing if I'm playing a house song right when it drops down you know if people aren't singing and it drops down I'm yeah. gonna say something to fill in the gaps right mm-hmm. and Absolutely. when they start singing along to the melody you know you let yeah. them sing you talk a little shit in between yeah. the kicks and the snares and that's that's and then as the build up for house is going up mm-hmm. that's when you can start talking your shit yeah because you're I, amping them up. The, when the buildup goes up and the one hits, you're amping them up. Yeah, I noticed that you know? in L.A. too. Like, I never, I think I might have talked about it before because now I'm really in, I'm in Vegas a lot now. Like, I never played intro, outro records. Never. Mm-hmm. You and played only the original. I just original, only the original, from the one. whatever yeah. it was from the one or I could catch the intro to get to the whatever. And I was like, Oh shit! Like, cause I'm like, well, damn, how the fuck did he get from one to the next? And the beat is here. It's you know, like we used to play instrumentals, mm-hmm. right? And the intro outro is basically the instrumental eight bars or sixteen to get to the record. And I'm just like, wow, this is so different. But the fact that they utilize that to keep the records moving, yeah, yeah. So that's why I was like, okay, I see what this is, but it's dope. And I, and I saw that type of DJing in Miami for the first time where I was there where, you know, this is when people were still dancing on the dance floor. And then the dude's like, uh, and he stops the record. I'm like, like every, like it was like a hard stop. Like if you're like on a, you're walking on, on like, a, like a train just stopped and the whole, yeah. the whole fucking that's, room move at that's once. That's the part that I'm talking That's about. what I don't, that. that shit is so. I don't, I don't think that's a problem. That's like a hard That is a stop, problem. Though, I don't like, think that's a problem. I think if you're doing it every two records or every other no, record, that's, that's a problem. No, that's what he's saying. That's what it, no, that's no, no, no. Like, that's what, what he's talking about. Like some DJs do that shit and that's why he says, like, I get, it's a cop out. I get it that that's a problem, but also if you ever been to a dance hall party, that's now, all night. dance hall is a whole yeah, but different But that's what I'm saying is that that's what's happening all that's a night. different animal. You get a dance hall DJ to do an I open format hip hop night. That's <laughs> wait, wait, wait. When you see a dance hall DJ mm-hmm. do a hip hop open format night, they're not fucking following any yeah. BPMs. They're on the mic switching records like every thirty two bars. Now they shit is way different though. It's, yeah. it's different because like, they my game is crazy. Bro, yeah. so you're comparing a, this is a, a regular hip hop DJ that's talking every other fucking record to like a DJ Puffy that just bringing the fucking energy with his voice. It's yeah. so different. But like Puffy is a different. Puffy that's what different. I'm saying. That's yeah. a dance no, no, no. hall DJ. No, 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 no. You Puffy's haven't different. seen. No, you haven't <laughs> seen. Puffy different. The, Puffy's different from like yeah, these, he's different. These other dance hall yeah, dudes. I agree, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, no, no. I've seen no, Puffy. I seen Puffy. That's what I know. I'm don't he's com- saying Puffy's I'm different. I'm just saying though. he's <laughs> different, bro. Like, oh, he's a different. Yeah, oh, yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's a very like, yeah. different style from like a dance Max. hall DJ from Brooklyn. Oh, okay, or okay. like any dance Max, hall DJ. My apologies. Where like they're, they're like they will literally play crank that, 
Yeah. And then they'll cut out the music, talk real quick, and drop Poison, Belbid DeVoe. Yeah. And they'll cut it out and drop in the club, 50 Cent. Yeah. But it'll still be kind of rhythmic and in time. That's what I'm saying. Some of these DJs just get on and be like, yo, we got it. Yeah, but you got to be specific because it's like the the shit you're talking about where they, they're making a speech and they're trying to amp shit up yeah. and change the energy of the room. Yeah. That's okay to do every 20 minutes or 30, 40 minutes. I but get it. But not like after every, every, yeah, yeah. every song. I mean, yo, yo look. <laughs> where were you when this happened? Yeah. If you're Hold doing, yeah, if you're doing that shit. This happened at the, <laughs> remember this one. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, you could tell when they overdoing us. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. They're overdoing us. What I don't you like. The story? Yeah, but you can't say like this one thing of cutting shit out and and swapping BPMs. Like, don't do that because there's motherfuckers who oh, do that shit fl- flawlessly. I just don't like them talking every fucking record. Yeah. Like every mix. No, I don't want to hear that. I mean, they, there's. I mean, I'm I'm okay with it if it right. works. It's, if it, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I can. There's times when I'm just like, you know, like Frank Jugger keep talking. I'm like, yo, I don't care. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's good. Yeah. Uh, you know, what I'm saying rest yeah. in peace. R.I.P. Yeah. Yep. But I'm not. I'm not mad if a motherfucker cut off the record and just start talking some shit. Yeah. But yeah, it I, has I, to be tastefully done. Actually, should we just quickly go through like the don't do's of mic work? You know. Yeah, for a yeah, second? I, yeah, yeah. I want to go through that. Let's do that. I should motherfuckers curse. Absolutely. Like, what is? Wait, what is? A, I, I'm always torn about this. Like, if you're gonna call ladies, like, hey, ladies, where y'all at, or where my bad bitches at? Like, to say Ooh. bitch, to say the word it, bitch, yo, and and that's where the demographics coming out. When you're right. looking at your party, you understand, like, <laughs> okay, these are when okay. They, when they say it, when not and to then say those it. are okay, yeah. and then those are. But again, that's your music. Like, wh- whatever you're playing. Is what captivates them, right? So mm-hmm. you are that person. So if you decide, I, I can't say bad bitch. I don't know why. I have a hard time. I feel like I'm disrespecting, and they're gonna get offended. They got to be a next level of drunk. Yes, yeah. that, that's also to, the to scream. Point. To when you scream. say like, <laughs> "Where my bitch is at?" Like for the for the women to scream when you say that, they got to be like next level drunk. Yeah, you know, I'm, like I'm where more, they, they like into it. I shit. won't call them bitches. I will. Say I won't call them I bitches feel, either. I, I, I fucks with the ladies. Like I'm like, I, I where my that, baddies at? I would say like, shout, shout out to my bad bitches in the building. <laughs> you see, I can't say that. Yeah, it's a cursing. I, I mean, I don't have a problem. I I do definitely curse. Do a lot. But yeah. what? Yeah, what is too parties. much though? What is what is a word? I, you know what do you what stay is? away from? It. But again, it's it's the it's the nature of controlling the room. So if you control in the room and. Everybody knows that I'm not calling you a bitch at that time. Like they're saying it. It's just like when you when you um, what's my favorite word? Right, bitch. Yeah, yeah man. Exactly. It's yeah. just a calling. It's a calling response. So when you say it, you know they're gonna say it. Snoop shit. Like women sing that record from the top of their lungs. Man, mm-hmm. I imagine. Man. Yeah. It's like if you're gonna play a, you're like, if you're gonna oh, play a song shit. with curses in it, why? What's wrong with get on the mic? Right. Saying the curse. Okay, I get it. Yeah, I like. Oh, so, what about? You can't be going that fuck shit, goddamn motherfucker. Yeah, we rocking this motherfucker. <laughs> that, that's what I'm saying. You can't do that, but <laughs> that's the perfect way to say that. Yeah. Fuck shit, <laughs> damn, 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 motherfucker. Ah oh, shit, we gonna fuck this fucking room up tonight. <laughs> We're fucking motherfucker. Turning up. <laughs> the motherfuckers, come on. I don't know. That shit is amping me up like this. <laughs> <laughs> Any of them ready to punch somebody in their face. I'm ready to stuff you, motherfuckers. You, and you think about it, but again, it, it definitely it goes with the record that you're obviously gonna right. play. You know what I'm saying? So it, it never just, never gonna drop Onyx Slam and shit yeah, right like afterwards. It's that, <laughs> that moment, man. I ain't gonna lie, I do because I definitely I definitely curse a lot yeah. at my parties. I do, and, and it's just I don't know. And it's not that I can stop because I can, but I just. You're right about the drinks because the drinks have settled in, mm-hmm. and you can see everybody's either twerking or shaking their ass or they doing something that calls for that moment. Right? You know what I'm saying? And then when you call for that moment, it's like, oh shit! And then you just go. I don't want to be a dick, but what phrases should be retired? I think everyone should have what like a good. Six to eight phrases that they rotate. Yeah, facts. If you don't have That's six good. to eight phrases, uh, like if you're just saying the same phrase over and over again, I think it can be whack. Unless you're like never and you're like, you know, we just warming up. Yeah. Never <laughs> will say we just warming up. For the whole three hours. For four hours. Four hours. Yeah. But for some reason it works. Like <laughs> for some reason that's like his Metro Boomin. That's your like Metro Boomin calling. Yeah, 
We gotta get, we gotta get her merch with yeah. that shit. Oh man, that's <laughs> like that's like your hip boy shit. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Man. We just warming up. We just warming up. Mustard on the beat, huh? Right there. It's like lights up in five minutes. We just warming up. No. It's just like all right. Wait, turn the lights off. We're just warming up. <laughs> just got here. What's going What's on? Fuck, man. I could I could be anywhere. I could be anywhere. Oh, if I hear man. Never's voice, if I hear that voice, and we just warming up. I'm like, that's Never. That's I right. know that's Never. <laughs> <laughs> if I hear any other DJ say, I'm like, damn, he's still never <laughs> stick here. <laughs> I think me, I think you got to be like weary about the countdowns, like the yeah. one, two, three shit. Because yeah. I hear motherfuckers doing that like with every song, and it's like you got to pick and choose. Are oh, they counting it yeah. down? Yeah, yeah. countdown, yeah. especially like in EDM, two, like up tempo EDM, uh, like yeah. the one, two, threes. I literally spent. Like weeks and days trying to come up with phrases. Oh, okay. So like there's certain phrases that I know no one was saying in the club. Even cursing, like saying like, yo, we ain't fucking around tonight. That's like, you. No if one I says hear that. that if I hear that, I know. And even like, even like, yo, we celebrating tonight. Like little things like this. Like oh, no one was saying. Oh, the other one that you said a lot? Uh, and even we celebrating tonight, I got it from Roger Ganji, remember? Robert, remember, the, remember Roger Ganji? Yeah, yeah. Because he, Roger, there was this DJ from Jersey, and uh -huh. he had a, and he, I don't know, was it a live mix or was was it a song? It was a live mix. It was a live mix, and yeah. he was on, the, and he on the mic. He said, "It's a celebration," but he said it in like a Jamaican accent, right? <laughs> wow. Do you yeah. remember? I do remember that. Yeah. And he was like, "It was a, ce it's a celebration." <laughs> and it, 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 was a, it was like an Italian dude from Jersey. Oh wow! And we, and I thought it was like so funny, but like interesting. And I was like, "How can I say?" You know, it's a celebration without saying without <laughs> without saying that. So I was like, "Yo, we celebrating tonight." So yeah. I would be like, oh, "I wouldn't be on the mic." Yo, we yeah. celebrating tonight. That's Who remembers saying. this shit? I, mean, I uh, say that a lot. You have some good ones. Even like I remember, I watched the Jay Z. Uh, it was when Neil Armstrong was DJing for Jay Z, mm -hmm. and it was like I, maybe it was during the Black Album era. Mm -hmm. It was that tour. There was a point where Jay Z was standing with Neil Armstrong. And Neil Armstrong was just playing every hit. And Jay-Z would be on the mic singing along to it. And then he would say, fuck that. And then Neil Armstrong would play another hit. Mm. And I was like, yo, I'm going to start saying fuck that yeah. on the mic. You start saying fuck that shit. I remember I saw that Jay shit and I was like, fuck that shit. And he would play like, you know, yeah. Neil would play like Money in the Thing. Mm -hmm. And he was like, fuck that shit. And then he would drop like, I just I always wonder you. why you said that shit. No, but he would just run through it. So I'm yeah. like, yo, like, fuck that. Because it just, everyone was like, fuck what shit? And then, oh, shit. They like, put, a, put a pix on them? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yo, fuck that. Let's keep it going. Everyone was like, fuck that. What are you talking about? And they were like, oh, shit. He just dropped the biggest song. <laughs> yeah. So like, yeah. But like, yo, like, I'm telling you, just go and like make your own phrases. Yeah. And like, think of like six to eight. Yeah. That you mm. could just say. Yep. And then like, yo, say how like, even come up with your own birthday shit. I recently went to like uh, Altura with uh, Exiles Party. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yo, some of the phrases he got, yo, like. It's dope. It's fucking dope. Yeah. And I was just like, man, I was. And they're Spanish too. So. It's in Spanish. Uh -huh. And it was like, I was like, yo, this shit is fucking dope. Yeah. And he's he's like singing the lyrics to certain songs over like, 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 I, like those yeah, dead, sure. those dead parts, That's right. those buildups. That's right. Everyone's chanting to it. I'm probably wrong, but he would like sing the, the lyrics to like Gulo. Okay. And he would be like, dun, 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 beat, da, dun, 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 Oh, he switches cool it up low. too. He yeah, goes, so no, but everyone's seen that. But it sounds dope when the, when you know it's a build up and it's a downtime. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then he just like he's just filling in it's the dope. gaps perfectly with all these different uh chants and shit. Yeah, he it's has like a perfect. one that goes, um, I mean it's a classic one. It's like, you know, get oh wow, wow. and then the crowd goes, Yo, get all tequila and he does this great shit yeah, about yeah, yeah. So he has great chants. Yeah, like you go, just like just, I'm telling you, like you just take like a month and you just like try to come up with different yeah. shit. Concept. And then your whole DJ game just changes up and you like yeah. create your own style. That's and then cool. you start seeing motherfuckers like like taking your shit. Which is which, yeah. which will like will happen, but it's like, yo, it's, it's definitely worth it. Yeah, yeah. I actually wanted to like discuss this with y'all so, really quick. Uh, a little off topic, but kind of on topic because we were talking about curses and shit. Mm -hmm. So like I recently downloaded Sexual Seduction, you know Snoop Dogg's song? Sexual but I've been running eruption. Sexual Eruption, the dirty version. I play forever. that version all the time. Yeah. yeah. I've always played Seduction. I never played Eruption. I like Seduction. I like Seduction. You do, right? Yeah, seduction yeah. sounds way better. Yeah, but- I don't know. You guys could tell me. At the time, we were all playing Sexual Eruption for some reason. I feel like the dirty version of Sexual Eruption was like the one to play. I could be wrong. Speaking of, that's just like on, what's the other one they did? Like Dre Day. 
So he'd be mm. like, it's Dre Day. Ah, Dre Day. Ah. Instead of, hey, yo, it's Dre Day. Nickel, free AK. Nickel. Yeah, yeah. You're talking about like. Uh, still Dre. You see, still Dre. Right. So like records like that, you know, it's it's. Some cleans are better than the dirty. Yeah. But I feel like sexual seduction aged better than sexual eruption. You want to know why? Because sexual seduction was the one being played on the radio, on TRL, on all right. these fucking mm-hmm. formats. And I can't remember having a dirty version of that. Like, never. Eruption. do you have the clean version? I'm looking at my laptop right now, and I don't have the clean version. Yeah, I don't have it either. That's the only one I, <laughs> I had to, I had to yeah. download that shit. Yeah. I, I, I definitely like the clean version, just... The fact, because it, it just sounds better. Seduction. Sexual sound. Seduction. Yeah, because I, I was playing Eruption. I'm like, yo, this shit sound nasty. <laughs> eruption. And even, and they were like, they were girls dancing to it, like wilding out. Yeah. And then they heard Eruption. They were like, that's nasty. <laughs> and they like kind of looked at me like, why are you playing this nasty why version? Why you playing that? Why are you playing this nasty version? And then I felt like this fucking oh, creepy shit. fucking DJ playing like, yeah, sexual Eruption. Yeah, but it be <laughs> Erup- like, Erupting on your oh, face. Yeah. But how <laughs> When you think about how many, <laughs> Whoa, how many that's rap a good turn. records, how many real records are like that that have a lot of changes in the records? Like we were just talking about, what was the other one like? Well, like back in the day, like when they had to make a radio version, yeah, they actually re-recorded, yeah, and yeah like they, re- 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 they rewrote yeah, all the lyrics and re-performed right. all the lyrics instead uh-huh. of going and tapping in and yeah. the sound doesn't sound right. So they or would they were just like now they're just like taking out the words. But yeah. back in it, like we were just talking about old dirty bastard with yeah. um, Brooklyn, Brooklyn Zoo, Brooklyn Zoo. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But that was you hated the clean. version. I hated the clean version. Of I I love the. <laughs> I love the creativity yeah. of the clean version. And there's another song you can't play in the clubs. Wu Tang Clan ain't nothing to fuck with. That one. The clean version is really mm-hmm. fucking bad because all this mm-hmm. is like zzz, zzz, everything's backwards. It's just like yeah, but the old dirty like the way he went no, no. no shame on a no and uh, all yeah. that all the shit that he did yeah. on the uh, Brooklyn Zoo. Yeah. yeah, I thought it was wildly yeah. creative. Oh, you you like the clean version better I do. too. I yeah. do. Yeah. I, I was just like I was trying to like think of all the clean versions that we. Whatever well, another bad song, clean version is um ain't no fun. Snow. Right, that's definitely one. And when I you can't play that clean version is horrible. I mean, yeah. but that's that's a version. I'm talking <laughs> about clean versions that are better. Balls. Yeah, because of course I mean, that's like one of the rare songs though that you can't play the a clean version. No, there's a fam. If you hear a clean version of a song where like the curses are taken out in uh-huh. a club, does that fuck up your vibe? A little bit. Does that fuck up your vibe? Nah, not mine. Not really. So if you, all right, the clean version ain't no fun. If you hear that in a club, it's like a fuck. Because they're club. singing that song no matter what. I don't make them sing that part. Like all the part. That's the. That's the. It's funny. The key of curse. Like what's the other one? Um, what's my favorite word? You know what I'm saying? Like everybody's gonna say that part. Everybody. You saw, so so <laughs> wait, I don't ever even what do what do they say when uh and ain't no fun like the lyrics. Oh, I, I have when it. I met you. Did they change I, the I, lyrics? They, no, no. They just they just cut it out. I have a cleaner version than that, and yeah. it doesn't even say that that line. Right, right. it doesn't even the whole line. And is she, like, man, it'll just, that and you even lick. So it's just blank. Even, it's just, yeah, it's just a, it's, it's just blank. instrumental. So I'm I'm thinking like back in the day, if I heard someone play the radio version of a song, it would annoy me. Yeah. Really? But now I don't think I give a fuck. Yeah. Like does uh, they, you then know what they and then remember it became super clean at its squeaky clean. Yeah, that has <laughs> cleaner than clean. Cleaner than clean. But yeah. I also feel like ra- some radio song, some radio edit versions of songs are better than the original. Of course, of course. And that's the. Clean I was version. trying to think of what, or like, what clean versions are better in the club than the actual than the. Dirty oh, in the version. club is hard. Uh, but oh, I thought like, can I get a with a, the J oh, yeah. yeah. uh-huh. yeah. Because people want to do, can I get a woo woo? Yeah, like yeah. That's I thought a good one. that yeah. was like a a better can clean I version. Get a what, what? Yeah. yeah, I give uh, you that. Wait, what's the clean version? Woo woo. Can I get a fuck? No, you? can I get a fuck you? Oh, the you dirty. See, that's version. crazy. I don't even know that. Yeah. yeah, it's oh, I I mean, I was seven when that song came out, but that. That record, I was. Can I get a woo woo? Then yeah. I was. No, can I, was, I get a fuck you? Fuck you. Oh, but that woo woo made the song it, way it, better. Yeah. yeah, everyone sings that shit. Yeah. Another song that I was thinking, me and you always talk about this, uh, Kirk, is that DMX record with Which Faith. One? Um, what's it, what's going down? Uh, how's it going down? How's it going? Down? Yeah, but that's that's more of a Trackmaster remix. Yeah. yeah. Oh, was that? That's oh, okay. a track I thought it was a radio remix. Re- edit. Remix. No, no, because then Faith Evans was on it. Yeah. So like it was a Trackmaster remix. Oh, okay. I, I, I mean, thought it was a radio. I edit. love 
Track Masters. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They they made everything so much greater. Track Masters, shit, Tim and Bob. They remixed so many songs that like that made it better, like Nas yeah. Street Dreams with R. Kelly. I mean, I can't say R. Kelly, but, well, you know, now it's, it's, but that R, yo, that yeah. Street Dreams R. That Kelly remix, Track Masters going, remix. Yeah. Uh-huh. Listen. I listened to that over and over that and over that again. Minute, that was a good one. That was so the video with, with Hype Williams. Yeah, yeah man. That shit, yo, I watched <laughs> that's that. That's crazy to make forever. a remix of a song and it becomes better than the original. And that's it, but that's what it was in that's the That's how 90s. it used to be though. The no, that's what I'm saying. Like, like these records that you guys are mentioning, I'm like, oh no, I only know this version. I don't know this other fam, version. Okay. Uh, arguably the most the best remix ever made, remixes ever made, arguably, might be the Need a Girl Part One and Need a Girl Part Two. For like the Need a Girl was completely different. Oh no, it's and then now you know the, Okay, you know there was an original, right? right. Yeah, the original. I I even like that. I, I then there was it. the uh, wait. There's an original in part one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Da, 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 oh shit, da, 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 I don't even know that. <laughs> I, I just know the one with Usher, the one with Usher's part one, the, 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 and then the one with Junior. Yeah, yeah, but those were two remixes. Those are the remixes, yeah. Remixes. That's the remix. And it was two completely different remixes. Yep. Yeah, oh, so shit. it was the I Need a Girl to Run. Right, right. And then it was the Pound and. Dun, That's dun, part two. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, that was part two. So you're telling me there's right? a but original original. There was, there was an yeah, original. Was, oh, so hey, let me play it. I'll play it for you. Hold on, hold on. Need a girl. That's crazy. You never heard it? No. Nah, Remixes nah. was the shit all through the 90s, man. Good. I'm telling you, yeah. that's the effect that these songs have that you don't even remember the, the original. Shit, think of all the Biggie records that were remixed, like most. Think of Daz Effects records when they in the yeah. 80s, mm-hmm. when they was, shit, Pete Rock, CL. I mean, Pete Rock, um, Q-Tip. I about to say. Was going course, back and forth. Yeah. Premiere, they were going back and forth with remix. Look at You're My Lady. When yeah. <laughs> so the, the, the pyramids, yeah, yeah, like it was so many records, and then they did this just for better listenership to play on the radio, and and I'm guessing I don't even think like was was remixes that wasn't really the thing. It just was on the record, and then again it was a back. It was that thing of again like the clubs were playing the remixes. You see what I'm saying? So what would you consider the first remix? We talked about this already. That's a goodie. You know what? I don't know about this is the first one, but I know I, this is the I, one that I, I, that blew it up is um Jodeci. I want to say I can was you, about to, to say me? Puff. I was definitely about to say Puff. Like I think Puff. The original was dope, but like I think he really was trying to capitalize off of the Jennifer Lopez breakup. Mm-hmm. Oh, and then yeah. he was like, "Yo, let me put out these songs and let me yeah. look heartbroken." Mm-hmm. Wait, like, but who's on that song with him? Uh, the the original is called "I Need a Girl to Bella." Okay, and well, who's and singing? I think I think Bella might be like a nickname for for, 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 for um, Loom. Jay-Z. Loom was on it. Yeah, Loom Mario Winan was on it. Also. Yeah, that's Mario Winan singing on that yeah. shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So okay, so, yeah, that's crazy. I didn't know that shit. Yeah, but that that was the first time when like I, that's why I call it one of the greatest remixes because. It was like holy shit! He yeah. just completely made two different, two different songs. Different songs like yeah. they could have just been two different songs, yeah. mm-hmm. three at this point. And he really yeah. capitalized off of like. Yes, he did. I mean, part two is crazy. And the whole song exactly. He could have gave up on one, but he went to do. And to this, <laughs> double down. Yo, literally to this day, I've never, I've, I don't know any don't any record knows, where man. I played two different remixes and I could play them the same night. I can't think of it. You know what either. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Oh man, um, yeah, there's shit. not one. Fuck, I'm trying to think. Oh, you know what, man? This reminds me of the story. I think there's a Netflix documentary on the women in hip hop. Uh-huh. Okay. And this woman, uh, she worked at Arista or Bad Boy. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, 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 no. This woman worked at Loud, I think. Okay. And it was around the time when Method Man was dropping his solo album. Oh, I heard and that. And the I Need a Girl. Oh. Yeah, All fam, I Need. I, 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 yeah, um, all, the All I Need. Is it, I'm going to tell I need, you exactly yeah. who she it was. Is. Yeah, um, she was on Def Jam. She was seconds. on Def Jam, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it wasn't loud. I'm sorry. I thought it was because of Wu-Tang. I'm going to tell you in two seconds. But we got to give she, her props. She got into it with... um. But no, let's let's take the story before we get into it. Yeah, yeah give me the story. So then, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So then, uh, she was going. She was doing the um, the song listing and credits for the album mm-hmm. for Takal for yeah. Method Man. Yeah, and she the all I need was actually an interlude, mm-hmm. and it yeah. just had the verse. Mm-hmm. 
and she was listening to it and she was like yo this needs to be a record because like this like they no one talks about like love like this and this is like you know method man kind of like a thug like yep. dude from staten island and he's talking about he still needs love and he wants a queen yeah and she went to um she went to russell right mm -hmm. yeah and she's like this needs to be a record her name is drew dixon drew dixon there we go. yeah and then she she's the one that made that what it is like she went i think she went to puff to yeah. remix it or, yeah yeah mm -hmm. And like she played it for Puff. No, 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 the, no. Here. The razor, the razor version. Well, well, no, no. She thought Mary J would sound amazing on it. Yeah. Yes. She's like Mary J. Blige would sound amazing on that it, person. or like Russell said that shit. So yeah. then she went to, and he was like, "Yo, you know what? Make it happen." He's like, yeah. "I'm, you know, like if you believe in this shit, make it happen." Do it. Yeah. And she connected all the dots, and yeah. Diddy was like, "I was fire." He's like, "Yo, we'll get Mary J. on it, but yeah. like, I, I want, I want to make a remix." I thought mm -hmm. that interview was so fire, man. I that's like, that's wow. crazy. But that, that's how important like remixes are. Yeah. yeah. And and it also goes to show you on on a person's vision. Like her vision was right. like, yo, that's like one of the greatest well, love hip hop records. It's, it's, out. it's a vision based yeah. on representation, yeah. right? Yeah. Facts. Because Facts. she was like, This is missing. Yeah. yeah. That was like this, hard. This kind of like expression of love is missing in hip hop. I actually spoke to her. Oh, you did? After that interview, and I was like, yo, like how did you come up like what was it in you to come up with that vision like what made you you know decide that you just wanted to to do that and she said i just felt it in my bones i was like wow yeah, yeah. that's hard and that may that's, be method's biggest that is his biggest hard, hit he won know. a grammy for it yeah she got no credit yeah, that's I wonder if crazy. she even got paid from that shit. She got she nothing. Probably got nothing. That was love. That's crazy. Yeah. Hip hop. Love that's hip hop, right? right? There, that's some. Yeah. Or that's, that's like the, the that's yeah. like one of those sad that's stories the of hip hop. Love bro. of hip hop. Yeah, that's man, just she should have got at least some some place. Well, we or don't know. It would. It, I would hope like because she bought that whole thing. I mean, it was just her that. idea. That's it was hard. a great idea, but it's just like yeah. Damn, we almost hit in two hours, Mel. Yeah. Damn. Thanks, thanks for coming through, though. Yo, man. listen, man. I'm you. always happy to come through and hang out and chill and do the things that I like to do with y'all, man. It's always hey. good to be here. That's what's up, man. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Mel. <laughs> <laughs> Harlem stand up. Yo, Mel, what thank up? you for coming through, Absolutely. man. Appreciate, Appreciate you, you, man. Absolutely. If you want to watch more episodes from Road Podcast, click either links on the left or the right. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube page and get updated on new uploads throughout the week. Peace.